Hey guys, in this video we're going to fix crafting arrows so we can craft multiple instead of just one because at the moment it doesn't make much sense with the materials we are using and also if you were to craft one arrow it doesn't actually craft you anything, okay? And the reason why we are not crafting anything is because in our crafting widget, so open it up we do have this craft item function and here we do have add random stats and here our arrow is not connected to anything, okay? But we don't actually want to generate random stats for an arrow. So what we're going to do is just copy the return node, add it here, connect the arrow, and then we're just going to return the item info from the beginning of the function. So the same one without change, okay? While we are here, we can also connect the bow to random weapon stat pool, okay? Because it doesn't generate any stats at the moment. Compile and save. And one more thing, we can again add comment here and start commenting the item types. So every time we add one more, we will know where to update it, okay? It's going to be to update item type. Compile and save it. And now to create, to craft multiple arrows in the blueprints, we do have a crafting S. So our struct, we can just add new variable here. This one will be called uh, quantity crafted. It will be integer. I'll save this one, close it. And now back in the crafting widget, we can remake this just simple pickup item to be able to pick up multiple. So drag this back. I'm actually going to create a new function here and it's going to be craft multiple. I'm not going to do it in a player blueprint because this one is very specific to the crafting widget, okay? In here we need to have an input which will be quantity. Mm, it will be type integer. And what we need to do here is first we need to get the player reference and pick up item so and as we had in the craft item first we need to check if the item was picked up and if it was a success okay first one because if it's not then inventory is full and we won't be taking any materials away so if we're crafting only one we always need to pick up item first with the active item info which is the item we are currently crafting and do branch check and if this was a success then we need to do one more check and this time we will check if this quantity is greater than one because we don't want to keep going if we're only crafting one okay we just need to return success so here on a false we're going to add return node And just you can return this, add the pin to node, disconnect it, and return false. So if it failed the first time, we just return false and we won't be picking up anything. Okay, we won't be crafting any item. We'll just say from the pickup function that the inventory is full. And if this was true, so if it picked up the first item, we need to check if it's greater than one. If it's not, then we return true because this one was a success, okay? And if it's true, if it's greater than one, then we're going to do for loop. So just simple for loop. And uh, first index will be one. So we don't have to subtract one from the quantity. And then we can just get quantity here, get quantity and connect it to last index, okay? Actually, we do need to still subtract one because we have picked up the first item here already, okay? So do minus one and then connect it back to the last index. And now in the loop body, uh, we're going to be getting the play reference. 
pick up item. Now, the also issue here is we could just loop this body like this and just so straight away like pick up 10 arrows for example okay that we want to craft but then there will be some issues let's say it fails halfway through so we had only 45 arrows out of 50 and it was the last empty slot in the quiver and we pick up five and after that it fails and it gives you five more warnings because it will keep looping and this pickup item will be just keep running and giving us inventory is full and first of all it doesn't look good and then second of all you know we are losing five arrows because we didn't have space so what we're going to do instead we're going to drop those arrows if we have crafted the first one successfully okay so if we have crafted the first one and let's say we only have five space we will pick up five and we will drop five to the ground and the way we're going to do it is we're going to promote this to a local variable and it will be local enough space. Nope. Created a comment, so rename it local enough space. Compile and let's make it true as a default because we need to check it here on the beginning. So we're going to do branch p and click and check if we have enough space. So it needs to always go to at least one more pickup, okay, from the beginning. And then we check if it fails there or not. So we need to pick up at least this one arrow, then the second one will either fail or set it to true and keep going. If it fails from the false, we instead going to get the player reference and drop item. Nope. Drop item. And the item we're dropping is the active item info. Now we need to remake our drop item function because at the moment it needs an inventory index, but these items are not in the actual inventory, okay? So open it up. In here we're going to add new boolean variable, which will be from inventory. So we are checking if we are dropping something from the inventory. Uh, again, compile it and let's make it true. Otherwise it changes our regular job function. Uh, here, set the default value to true. Compile it and then so after we drop the item, we don't necessarily need to remove it. We can drag this back. And we're going to do branch check and see if this local, uh, not this variable from inventory. So get it from inventory. And it's true. We will remove the item if it's false. We just need to, we don't need to refresh inventory. We can just set, set simulate physics for the items we're dropping. Okay, so it won't be removing nothing. Now, one thing when you're setting some variables in the function to true, let's just make sure that it's working correctly. So open the options widget. And here on drop, just compile it again, unclick and click on it again and compile it just to make sure it's working correctly. Because sometimes it gives us some bugs. And now we have done this, we can go back to crafting. Here we are unchecked from inventory because it's not going from inventory, we're just dropping items and on completed. So when this for loop is completed, we will return the note with success okay and now back in a craft item we're going to replace this so delete this get the craft multiple we still need to randomize stats first because it's straight away after picking up the item and actually i just realized that we 
need to pass the random stats item as well. So let's do one more input. And it's the item info type. Random stats info. Compile, then it will go instead of this. And here, random stats info. All right, compile and save. Now in a craft item, we can connect it. Quantity, we do have crafting here, so we'll break it open. Quantity crafted. And if it's a success, we'll, re we'll level up the crafting and we will remove the materials, okay? From the correct item materials, yeah, from the same one. Cool, compile and save. And now just so we can see it in action, I'm going to change my data table. So items DT for iron arrow, I'm just going to change max stack to two. And in play, I'm going to set change query size to two as well. So you only have two slots. That will fit two arrows each. Now I need to reload the arrows, otherwise these ones will still have 50. So iron arrow, I don't need this, I'll just keep one. And now, if we play the game, I'm gonna pick up these iron bars. So pick up one arrow. Obviously don't do as little as two slots because then this one doesn't fit, it needs to be at least three. But now I have one arrow. I should be able to pick up only three. So I'm going to craft this. It crafted iron arrow. And it actually crafted only one still. Okay, one more thing. So crafting, crafting multiple quantity. Ah, right. We haven't set the quantity. So in item info, first thing we need to do is default value for crafting quantity needs to be one. So that will be standard as a default, save it. And now in the data table, let's just check for golden bow. Yeah, quantity crafted is one. And then for iron arrow, we're going to change it to quantity crafted 10. Now, oh, this might not reload again. Let's see, iron arrow. Pick up the materials, I got one arrow, I'm going to craft, crafted iron arrow, and again it crafted only one, hmm, quantity crafted, crafting widget, what have I done wrong? So quantity crafted, quantity is greater than first index, last index. Ah, pickup item is not connected. So pickup item needs to be the, these random stats, this one here, because we're not picking up anything. Third time the charm, let's see. One arrow, craft arrow. Okay, it gives me inventory full, but crafted iron arrow, okay? Because we have crafted it once, or like three times. And then rest of them should be dropped, okay? It's actually quite cool, they are spinning on the top, on the tip. I'm not sure if you can see it. All right. And now I can't pick them up because I have full inventory. But I can drop it normally. My normal drop function seems to be working fine. I can pick it up again. And that's crafting correctly. Okay. So now I can change back my query size. I mean, this won't probably happen very often because we do have 
enough space in the quiver whatever it was before 12 but you know some of you might want to have it upgradable so we'll later on with the skills we'll upgrade the quiver size or something and it might actually happen that the arrows won't fit but you know it's always good to prevent it and now we do have this function for crafting multiple you know we can reuse it for different items and we want to also display it because at the moment we're just saying we're crafting one arrow so in event graph we do have item name i believe this one here yeah item name so uh, disconnect this name again i'm going to use select node because it's quite useful and we're going to check if the crafting break it open and quantity crafted is greater than one otherwise we don't want to change the name so if it's not it's just going to be name and we return it if it is greater than one it's going to be append and it's going to be names uh, sorry name i connected the first one name uh, space x and one more pin quantity crafted like that okay so now it should display correctly so we got arrows times 10 okay and then also we want to display it maybe here on the side as well on this button so go to widgets crafting button and in here it's the item name as well we can actually maybe copy this part copy this whole thing go to crafting button in here item name is the second one there so this will go to text this one will delete this one is the crafting name is the name and the false is the name as well compile and save so crafting we got 10 arrows let's try to craft it one more time there we go it filled up the slots okay because it's picking it up one by one and now i'm just going to change my arrows back to 50 max stack so i don't forget about it and that is it so i'll see you in the next video bye